okay, I've got a few abstract ideas that I'm going to attempt to articulate and illustrate with art. So the sun for me represents uh, the origin, the source of tricking. It represents the very main storyline of the sport. And I'm using um, these uh, rings around the sun to indicate lengths of time uh, that separate from the very beginning. Um, you'll see that I'm plotting stars along those rings. Those represent judges, but also grand world champions. So this section of the, the map is going to detail um, the ascension, the, the how status has been passed on from one judge to one champion. And um, of course, uh, the main focus is going to be the grand world champions because uh, we want to keep track of their legitimacy. Mind you that the sport is kind of messy, but as time goes on, um, everyone contributes and makes it more and more um, more interconnected. And I would say that, uh, that it's become more proper in the way that it's organized. You know, it's becoming more and more and more official, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, okay, so let me just pause real quick. So um, the ring that contains the black star, that's Steve Tarada, who's the best battler from his generation. There is technically battlers that predate Steve Tarada. And so the year 2000 is when the very first tricking battle took place. Uh, before then, there were um, sports martial artists who were really crafting the very fundamentals of the sport, taking rough concepts from wushu, capoeira, um, gymnastics, etc., and you know, started to vary their styles and become more creative. It wasn't a very complex form of tricking. It was a very um, basic, but yet, um, you know, beginner form of tricking. But by the time it became um, displayed to the public officially in the form of what are called um, XKC or Extreme Kicks competitions, because back then, uh, fundamentally, you had to throw a kick with a flip or a kick with a twist for it to be considered a trick. Of course, now that's not true, but that was the mentality back then. Um, so initially they were called XKC was what a tricking battle was called, but now it's just, you know, everyone's changed the sport, right? We've, we've helped to refine it and improve our understanding of it. And it's evolved and changed quite a lot, but Steve Tarada's generation, uh, as a battler, he took the stage and gained uh, status from Mike Chat, gained status from his peers, and um, really pushed the sport and has become um, one of the one of the most contributive judges, I would say. He's actually judged quite a lot in various places around the world. Uh, he's the inspiration behind Chris Mark, who was my inspiration here in Toronto. Uh, he's helped to inspire a lot of people to get into the sport of tricking. He's seeded the planet, so to speak. Now, who came after him was Daniel Graham. Uh, Daniel Graham and Three Amigos, they learned, they were within proximity to Steve Tarada. Uh, they competed often, sometimes in the same competitions. Um, but eventually they would go on to, I would say, push the skill level higher and had a lot more diversity a little bit more complexity, and um, they would go on to um, provide status to Michael Guthrie. So um, the reason why I'm drawing lines from one uh, from one Grand World Champion to the next is to indicate that in a formal setting, uh, that at a at a time where things were uncertain, for example, Michael Guthrie's generation. Uh, you know, he was battling against Jacob Pinto. And, you know, there might have been a debate who's rank one, who's rank two, who's the best battler. I would say Michael Guthrie was always the clear winner. But in a formal setting, it could be difficult to, to point that out, right? But Michael fought for it and eventually gained status, uh, you know, from these judges, from Daniel Graham, from... Um, Jeremy Marinas and, and Anis uh, Chirpa. So, you know, that's that's official status from one generation that's been passed down to the next. 
and um, Michael Guthrie would do the same. And of course, I'm only focusing at this point because this is just the very first rendition of this section of the map. Um, it's just going to focus on uh, the Grand World Champions. Um, but you can see how they're all connected, okay? Um, and uh, I'm putting Mito on the map here as well because technically she's received status from Velu. Um, she's received status from Michael Guthrie at his competition at Adrenaline. Um, and technically, technically, I've received status from Velu um, at his competition, also when he judged in Portugal. So there's a lighter shade um, of status that I've received, because I am technically on the map. Um, but also, um, I use the moon, by the way, and the sun as symbols for Utopia tricking. Uh, for me, when I was a kid growing up, uh, the moon was actually a logo that was found. I know this sounds pretty, pretty dorky, but uh, it was found on a video game item in a game called Legend of Zelda. And uh, the main character had a shield called the Mirror Shield. And uh, it had the moon as a logo, a crescent moon. And the purpose of the Mirror Shield is to reflect light, right? And my role that I see myself here in the world of tricking is to essentially reflect the light, you know, so to speak, um, using art and using uh, the ranking system to essentially capture the actual true events of the sport, uh, to store that, and then to have it presented out to the public, have it presented back to the world. So that's kind of my purpose here in the world of tricking, which is why I use the moon as my logo. And uh, so technically I'm on the map, I do have champion status. I've worked alongside um, Rasmus Ott when I, when I judged in Denmark. And I've been very fortunate to have been blessed by Scotty Skelton, who judged at my events here in Toronto. So, um, you know, I'm technically on the map. I'm not a Grand World Champion. My role is different. So I use the moon as my logo. The stars are really the Grand Champions. They're the, the top battlers. I'm only a champion grade battler. These guys are like way more into high level battling and high level competition. So of course we use a star to represent, um, you know, their their uh, role here because they're both judges, but also champion battlers, world champion battlers, the best of the best. And I'm gonna add a lot more um, judges to this uh, section here. Um, as you can see in the middle lower section of the map, there's only five stars and then their surrounding teammates, right? But I'm going to I'm going to add a lot more judges to this upper section here where there's the sun and um, and plot a lot more people who have bestowed status to to these champion battlers because that will help to indicate um, how valuable and, and why do I consider someone a Grand World Champion? Who did they receive status from, right? Um, it's important to see the legitimate um, connections between judges and battlers. And so I'm gonna be keeping track of that using this as a tool. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and yeah, I know there's some abstract ideas and concepts in here. I still have to think a lot more, but um, I love how it all sort of intertwines with my brand here and what I'm doing. So hopefully it makes sense. It makes sense to me, but I think maybe in a few years when I develop this a lot more, it'll be a lot more clear and people will understand why I see things the way that I see things. Anyways, hope you have a great day.